going to baby step our way through rational exponents here by starting with a simplifying expressions of the form a raised to the 1 over n, or b raised to the 1 over n, some base raised to the 1 over n power. If you're not familiar with this rational exponent notation, please go back to the previous lecture, which is uh, the concept base for rational exponents. Uh, that's very important here. I assume that you've already actually watched that. Uh, prerequisites here are going to be that you need to know everything about exponents so far. Radicals, you need to know how to take a radical or what a radical is. Uh, you need to know about roots, like the cube root and the fourth root, that type of thing. You need to know the laws of exponents and integer exponents, including negative exponents and zero exponents. And finally, you need to know that rational numbers are just decimal numbers, like 1 fourth is the same thing as 0.25. That's going to be required for some of the problems that I do, uh, mainly because uh, I know that a lot of textbooks don't have examples like that, but it's good to have examples where you have decimal exponents as well. Now we'll start by recalling that the definition of exponential no or exponent notation or rational exponent notation is b to the 1 over n is equal to the nth root of b, where n is just a natural number. For example, uh, and this is what I wrote in the concept lecture, uh, something like uh, 64 to the 1 seventh is the same thing as just saying the seventh root of 64. Now, in reality, there's a little more to it than that. There's this extra little theorem that we add here, which is to say that if you have b to the m over n, like 64 to the 1 over 7 that we just did, it's equivalent to saying either the nth root, which is, would be the 7th root, of that 64 raised to the first power, or it would be also equivalent to saying the first power of the seventh root of 64. In either case, should note that the root is the denominator of the fraction. So in both cases here, it's the seventh root. And the numerator of the fractional exponent is going to be the power that's applied in either case. It doesn't really matter, obviously, because the first power of a number is just the number. So it doesn't matter where you put the first power in, in this case. In this lecture, we're only going to focus on rational exponents that have 1 in the numerator and then some other integer or natural number in the denominator. So in our example set here, you're going to notice several different styles to rational exponents. And I want you to know that no matter what, they're all basically saying 1 over a number. So for example, in this first case, it's 625 to the 1 fourth power. Well, that's the same thing as saying the fourth root of 625. And recall in the previous lecture, we were asking ourselves, what number can we raise to the fourth power to become 625? Well, that number would be 5. 5 to the fourth power is 625. And by the way, if you're looking for uh, a number that is uh, the fourth root of 625, or if they're asking for the eighth root of something, or the, or the fifth root of something, or the fourth root of something, you essentially just need to write down, like you start with the number 2, then move on to the number 3, and move on to the number 4, and take powers of those. Like, 2 to the 4th power is just 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 2 squared times 2 squared, which is 16. 3 to the 4th power is 3 squared times 3 squared, which is 81. And so on and so forth. 4 to the 4th power is like uh, 4 squared times 4 squared, which is going to be 256. So I know, see how these numbers are increasing? Oops, that was 4 to the 4th power. Uh, I know that 5 to the 4th power has to be greater than 256. Probably uh, not a ton greater, but greater enough. Uh, and then, so this will be 5 squared times 5 squared, which is 25 times 25. And I do happen to know that that's 625. So that's generally how I've always found roots, is that I just start with the number 2 and work my way up. Sometimes you can skip a bunch of numbers. You can say, well, what about 10 to the 4th power? And you say, oh, 10 to the 4th power, well, that's that's like 100 times 100. Or in other words, 1 with 4 zeros after it. There we are. 10,000. And, and you look at 
625 is far less than 10,000. So you know that it's that the fourth root of 625 is going to be much less than 10. So you might want to try half of that and, and work your way down. All right, so let me erase these. And we'll go ahead and try the sixth root. So that's what this notation means. It means the sixth root of 64. And again, I'll just start at the number 2, raise the 6th power to see what that is. Well, that's like 2 cubed times 2 cubed, which is the same thing as 8 times 8, which, ah, we're lucky, it's 64. So 2 to the 6th power is 64, so therefore the 6th root of 64 must equal 2. Now this next example is a great example that doesn't get a lot of play in uh, textbooks and I wish it would because it's it really is one of the better examples out there a hundred thousand to the point two power well that's the same thing as saying one hundred thousand to the well let me convert that decimal to a fraction to the two tenths power right that is two tenths and of course we can simplify that fraction anything that you've known from the past is fair game in a current math course and so simplifying fractions is fair game here. And look what happens when we simplify that fraction. We're down to, we need to find the fifth root of 100,000. Now a good guess for any root of a number that's um, a bunch of zeros in it is 10. So let's look at 10 to the fifth power. That's one with five zeros after it. And you see that's 100,000 actually. So here we are, the fifth root of 100,000 must be 10. So whenever you see a decimal exponent, you could change that to a fraction exponent and then reduce that fraction. Sometimes you get lucky, like this one right here. Uh, first of all, we have a negative on the exponent. Everything you've learned in the past is fair game. So I could rip that negative off that exponent and drop the base down to the denominator along with the positive version of that exponent now. Furthermore, I could change that exponent from a 0.5 to a 1 half. And finally, 1 half power is the same thing as the square root. So we're taking the square root of 64 in that denominator, which is just 1 eighth. There we have it. So you have all different kinds of examples here. Just note that if you have negative exponents, you, you can make use of all the theorems you know from the past. If you have decimal exponents, change them to fractions. Reduce the fractions, and then change it to radicals. Now, speaking of changing to radicals, we'll go ahead and practice our conversions to radical notation. So I give you a bunch of stuff with exponent notation and I ask you to convert it to radical notation. I need to change one thing here. I just need to change that exponent on that 3y to a 0.1 because it wasn't going to work out with a 0.4. Alright, so let's go ahead and change all these to radical notation. One thing I need you to be aware of is that an exponent only affects what it's touching. So like this 1 -fifth exponent here, the power of 1 -fifth, is touching everything in this parenthesis. So it's touching all of that 4x. So it is really saying I want to know what the fifth root of whatever's in that parenthesis, which happens to be 4x. So that's the fifth root of 4x. And if I could, I would take the fifth root of that, but I can't. I don't know the fifth root of 4, nor do I know the fifth root of x. So that's just as good as it gets. Again, in the next example, it's a decimal exponent, which we'll worry about in a moment, but the exponent itself is touching this entire picture. And the more you think of math in terms of pictures, rather than variables and stuff like that, the better off you are, honestly. So we have some picture raised to the 2 tenths power. Well, let me reduce that fraction here. That's that picture raised to the 1 fifth power. So we're back to the fifth root of that picture. The fifth root of that picture. And again, there's nothing else you could do. Do not think that you could split this apart. Addition and subtraction are the worst operations in the world. Whatever you want to be true with them is, in general, not true. So this is not, and I'll write this in red, this is not equal to the fifth root of x minus the fifth root of 7. It's just not that. Because we ha don't have a theorem that says that we can break that apart. 
Also, you can see why it's not true if you take a, a simple example like the square root of 9 plus 16. Well, we know the square root of 9 plus 16 is going to be the square root of 25, which should be 5. Okay. But had you tried to break that apart to the square root of 9 plus the square root of 16, that's 3 plus 4, which is 7. Notice, totally different answer if you break it apart. These two things are not equivalent. So therefore, breaking it apart is not a good choice. I'm going to erase that so that's out of our way here and get back to work. The next example, I have some picture, and again, this is not much different from the part A example, honestly. I have some picture raised to the one-tenth power. Let me rewrite that decimal exponent as a fractional exponent. So I have 3y, that's the picture, raised to the one-tenth power. That's just saying I want to know what the tenth root of 3y is. Now finally, Every once in a while, uh, this next actually, actually this next example demonstrates several things. Uh, one, that you can use negative exponents still. Two, that sometimes decimal exponents aren't as pretty as we want them to be. And three, you have to pay very close attention to what the exponent is touching. The first thing I'm going to do is actually convert this exponent here to a fraction. So as an aside, and I'll write this over here, aside, I know that 0.2125 is the same thing as saying 125 over, let's see, that's a 10, the hundreds, the thousands place. And both numerator and denominator are divisible by 25 at least, so I'm going to divide both top and bottom by 25. I know 25 goes into 125 five times. I happen to know that 25 goes into 1,000, let's see, 4 times 10, 40 times. So this fraction can be reduced to 5 40ths, but that's not it, right? Both these numbers are still divisible by 5. So I'll divide both top and bottom by 5. If I do, 5 goes into 5 once, it goes into 40 eight times. And so you see here, that overall, once everything's reduced, said and done, 0.125 is the same thing as 1 eighth. So let me write that in here. This is negative 5 z b to the negative 1 eighth power. And now I'm going to ask a critical question. What is that exponent touching? Is it touching the negative, the 5, the z, or the b? The only thing it's actually touching is the b. The difference in this case is that there aren't parentheses linking the b, the z, and the 5 together. It's just the, the exponent just affects whatever it's currently touching, and in, in this case, it's touching the b. So I'll go ahead and apply the, or I'll rip off the negative off that exponent, and I'll drop that base, which is b in this case, downstairs and replace the exponent of negative one-eighth with a positive one-eighth. Another thing I should probably mention here is that I get a lot of students that see a negative in front of that five and think that should move that five downstairs. No, it doesn't. That negative is multiplying that five. It's just like a negative five. You would never move a negative five down the, the denominator um, just because there's a negative in front of it. So don't do it here. All right, let's go ahead and do one more thing. We have to change this to radical notation. So that's just going to be negative 5 over, or 5 times z over the 8th root of b. And that is it. That's how you convert to radical notation. Now we're going to do the opposite, convert from radical notation to exponential notation. And this is just as quick. You just say, okay, well, that's three in this case, and we have the sixth root of t, which is the same thing as saying t to the one over six power. It's just that quick. Sometimes it's not so easy to see, but in this case we have a negative five over, and then we have this picture, this picture right here, and we are taking the seventh root of that picture, which is the same thing as saying we're raising it to the one seventh power. By the way, you might have an instructor that's okay with this 
converting this to negative exponent notation, writing negative 5, and then moving this base n exponent upstairs. If you have an instructor that's OK with that, that's absolutely fine. Just make sure that you attach a negative to the exponent when you do that, because you're switching positions from numerator to denominator, or vice versa. This is technically the form that most um, engineers, mathematicians, and, and so on and so forth deal with. We don't mind having negative exponents. But when you initially work with exponents in algebra, you try to make them positive, just so you can get in the habit of of working with them. But eventually, it becomes less important to move them around and more important to know how to work with them. In this next set of examples, we're going to just take a look at things that we can't easily evaluate. In this case, we're being asked to evaluate these numbers raised to these powers. If you're asked to do something like this, and they say round answers to the nearest thousandth or hundredth or whatever it may be, it's, that means grab a calculator. That's, that's literally what that means, grab a calculator. So I'm going to go ahead and load up my calculator here. And I'll move it off to the side so that I have access to it. But I can at least draw on here as well. First thing to note is that when you, uh, when you grab a calculator for one of these, you're going to have an approximate solution. It's not actually going to be equal to anything. Uh, it's going to be approximately equal to. Main reason is because none of these are uh, perfect roots. So this first one, the way you do this on a, well, at least a graphing calculator, is you just type in 0.0045, and then use the caret key here to raise to a power. And then because this power has a lot of things in it, has a negative sign, a zero, a decimal point, and a two, you're going to have to start, you're going to have to put a parenthesis in here. In fact, it's always a good idea when you're raising numbers to powers to use parentheses to contain the powers. Uh, and then a negative 0.2 is what I'll put here. And I'll hit enter, and I get this number. And I want to round that to the nearest thousandth. So it's 2 point, let's see, 947. 947. Let's see that again with an, a different example here. We have 1.14 raised to. And again, start a parenthesis and put point, negative 0.1. And close the parenthesis hit enter and here we have 0. Point, what is it 987 by the way if you wanted to toy with it a little bit you could say well, wait a second i could rip out the negative off that exponent it would be 1 over 1.14 to the point 1 power and so if you did that 1 over 1.14 raised to the now positive 0.1 power, you'll find that the answer will be exactly the same. And this last one, you do not have a fourth root button on your calculator. I mean, some people do. Some uh, scientific calculators have uh, an nth root button. But a much faster way to do the fourth root is with rational exponent notation. So let me go ahead and change this. It's not going to be roughly equal to. It's going to be exactly equal to 42.1 raised to the 1 fourth power. And now I'll use my calculator to find what that is approximately equal to. So go into the calculator, that's 42.1 raised to the, and then you start a parenthesis, 1 over 4. It's so important to start a parenthesis there. If you don't, the, the calculator will think you're raising 42.1 to the first power. It'll calculate that and then divide that result by 4. So I get. 2.547. That's rounded to the nearest south thousandth.